Hello, I'm Greg, and this is the sixth video in my Unity 3D tutorial series, How to Write Cubert from Scratch. In this video, we fix several bugs, and we add a couple more enemies. We take the complement of Ugg, which is Wrongway, who crawls up the opposite side of the cubes as Ugg, and we also added Bad Ball, who's simply a red ball that hops down the pyramid and will kill Cubert if he hits him. So, grab your favorite beverage, pull up a chair, and follow along as I teach you how to write Cubert from scratch in Unity. In our previous video, we added Ugg, the side-crawling enemy. Um, he'll crawl up from the bottom and he'll hop along the edges of the cubes and chase after Cubert. Uh, but there are some bugs with Ugg that I think we're going to want to address. Like they're, they're jumping off of the board when they shouldn't, um, which obviously defeats some of the purpose of them coming after Cubert. Also, when Coily jumped off the edge, all of these enemies should have died, and they did not. So I've actually got a whole list of to-do items I want to cover in this video. Uh, the first one is Ugg jumping off the screen when he shouldn't. Um, the other being all monsters should be destroyed when Coily dies. Uh, Cubert is colliding with the monsters when they hit him. And so because of the way I implemented the logic to respawn Cubert at his current position, he will actually respawn in a position that's not in the center of his cube, uh, which just causes all kinds of problems down the road. So I'm going to fix that. Um, also, when he jumps from the transport disc to the start location, um, sometimes he's jumping to where he last died. So if he was killed before he jumped on a transport disc, uh, when he respawns, when he jumps back on the board, he'll actually jump to that transport disc and that's a logic error I need to fix. Um, also the monsters can collide with one another. Well specifically Coily can collide with Ugg um, which also knocks him out of position. So I'm going to move Coily to his own layer. He's currently on the default layer and set him up in the physics setting so that he won't collide with anything except the platform and Cubert. Um, the other thing I want to do if I have time, depending on how long this video gets, is I want to start adding some more new features. I want to add more enemies like Wrongway. Uh, Wrongway is going to be pretty much just like Ugg, except he's going to be on the other side of the cube. Um, Ugg is on the left side of the cube and Wrongway is going to be on the right side. And then Bad Ball is basically just going to be a red ball that hops down uh, kind of like Coily does before he hatches into a snake. And he'll just hop down until he jumps off the bottom. And if he hits Cubert, he'll kill him. Um, the other thing, if you've ever played the original Cubert, when you get to higher levels, you have to toggle the platforms more than once to flip them. So, um, for instance, right now, it just goes from the start color to the flipped color. Well, what we want to do is, on higher levels, have it so you have to flip it to two or three different colors before you complete that platform. Uh, and the other thing I might want to do is scale the number of monsters that can be active at any given time based on what level you're on. So maybe on the first level, there won't be that many at a time. And then as you complete levels, we'll increment that number and make the game get progressively harder and harder. So the first thing I want to do is address the issue with Ugg jumping off the screen when he shouldn't. So let's look at how we would go about fixing that. I'm going to go into our scripts enemies folder and open up the Ugg script and scroll down. So here's his jump method. We're getting a random jump location and then we're asking the board manager if that location is out of bounds. And we're letting them know we're a sidewalker because the positions will be different since we're clinging to the sides of a uh, cube and not jumping on top like normal. Uh, we can go lower than the regular, you know, than Cubert and Coily can, but we can't go quite as high because there's no wall to hold on to at the top. So this, I think, is where the problem is. This has got to be returning true when it shouldn't. And I could probably, I could show you how we could debug this actually, and we could figure out which of these values need changing. 
But instead of doing this with math like we're doing here, I'm going to show you another way that we could do this. Uh, I think an interesting way to do this would be to use a raycast. So I'm going to go into this uh, function up here. I'm going to create a couple of private variables. Um, up here, and they need to be static because this function landing out of bounds is static. So I'm going to create, they don't need to be public. I'm just going to create them up here. I'm going to say static layer mask. I'm going to have platform layer and floor layer. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because a sidewalker can walk on both of these, uh, but Coily and Qbert can only walk on these. So we're going to, actually, I think a good way to do this would be to use a property and then have the property populate these if they're not already populated. So let's add a static layer mask platform layer and it's just going to have a getter and we'll say if platform layer is zero so we haven't set it yet then we're going to get it we're going to say platform layer equals layer mask dot get mask platform and then we're just going to return platform layer and we'll do the same thing for floor layer static layer mask floor layer with a getter and do the same thing if floor layer equals zero floor layer equals layer mask that get mask floor and we will return floor layer I want to point out something I had a viewer post a question uh, they were getting some errors. They were following along my tutorial and they were getting some errors. And I think they're fairly new to C Sharp. And I'm using the Rider editor. I'm using this editor, one, because it has really good Unity integration. Uh, but two, because I won a free one-year license for it on Jason Wyman's Game Dev Show. Um, and so why not use it, right? But one thing that Rider does, which is a nice feature, but I can see where it would be confusing to people who are new, is it showing me the name of the property that this value is being passed in for? So this is a parameter to get mask, and it's the layer names parameter. Now, you don't type this in. This is just something nice that Ryder is showing us to let us know what this value is for. Same thing here. You don't need to do this cast. Um, same thing here. Same thing here. This is just informational stuff that Rider is showing us. You don't have to type that in. And if you type it in wrong and you like omit the colon, um, you'll get a compilation error. So it's just an extra thing that can go wrong if you're trying to type all this stuff in. So just don't do it. Uh, hopefully that clarifies any confusion that some people might have had. All these things here, uh, which are nice. Um, I can see if you're new to C Sharp, you might think, yes, I need to type that in. You really don't. All right, so we have these properties now to get us our platform layer and our floor layer. I'm going to collapse these just so they're not taking up as much room. And we're going to go down here to our landing out of bounds function. So what we're going to do is we are going to do a raycast. I don't want to go from exactly this position. I'm going to go from a little bit above this position. So what I'll do is I'll say var pause equals landing position and then I'm going to increment the Y by half a unit and then down here instead of doing this math I'm just going to comment that out I'm going to return physics not physics <laughs> dot raycast so if we're not hitting something we're jumping in the thin air right so we're going to take it from this position which is just above our landing position and we're going to cast down and we're going to go two units we probably don't need to go that far but 
just for margin of error. And then we're gonna give it our layer mask. So we want, for the sidewalker, we want the platform layer, and we're gonna do a bitwise or with the floor layer. Um, floor layer. So this will return true if we're not hitting a platform layer or floor layer down below this landing position. And we'll do the same thing outside of this if statement. So if we're not a sidewalker, we just want to check for the platform layer. So that should cause the um, monsters to just jump legally when they can and not think they're landing out of bounds when they're not. Um, so let me go ahead and see if that works. We'll jump into Unity and we will hit play. And I'm just gonna watch them to see how they jump. So there's something wrong here because neither one of them, well, he's jumping, but Coily is not. That's very interesting. But the Uggs are all looking good. He got to the end and jumped off. That was fine. He got to the end and jumped off. But Coily is not jumping and we have an error in the console. Let's go take. So let's jump back into that board manager and scroll down to our landing out of bounds and look at our logic. And here's the problem. We're assigning landing position to pause, but then we're updating landing, but we want to update pause.y here. That I believe will fix it. Let's go back into Unity and hit play and see what happens. And he's jumping fine. Now he jumped off the edge, but these monsters didn't get. Oop, that's not right. He should, uh. Oh. Hmm. So that logic is not quite right for Ugg because he will hit a platform even when there's nothing to the right of him. So I have to do a uh, raycast um, to, in those directions too to see if he's got a wall to hang on to. In fact, that's probably the best way to do it for him is just to see if that position, if that landing position has a wall that he can cling to. Uh, I'm going to come back and revisit that, but first I want to fix this issue with the monsters not being destroyed. So this should be really simple to fix. Um, we go back into that landing out of bounds. And here where we're a sidewalker, we don't want to cast down. We want to cast forward. Um, I'll show you what I mean. If we go back into the game, I'm going to turn on our pyramid here. Oh, and that reminds me, if this is on when we play the game, this is going to cause problems. It's going to mess up our logic for completing the level. Um, so to fix that really quickly, I'm going to get a little sidetracked here, but I just want to really quickly add a script. And I'm going to call this disable on start and select our pyramid. I'll drag that script on there and open it up. And all I want to do is in the start method, I want to say game object dot set active false. And that way, if I accidentally leave that on in the inspector, it'll turn it off for me. And this is a really good example of how you can just Everything is so componentized in Unity. So I just have a separate component here, disable on start. I can add it to any component that I want to have disabled when I start, and it will turn it off. So right now, 
you can see that pyramid is enabled, it's active. If I hit play, it should turn off. I'll hit pause, you can see it's turned off. So that works nicely. I'll go ahead and stop that, disable it anyway. Now we want to, I'm gonna turn it on for our demonstration purposes again. We wanna add UG so you can see what I'm talking about with we want to raycast forward. So if we drag UG into the scene, this is the Z axis. In Unity, Z is forward. And so we always want to be casting forward to see if he's got something to hang on to. So I'll go ahead and delete this from the scene, turn off our pyramid, and go back into that board manager script. and back into our landing out of bounds function. So instead of casting down, we're gonna cast forward. And you know what? We don't need this floor layer anymore. So let me just go ahead and get rid of that. And we can get rid of the little getter that I added there. Go back into Unity and hit play and we should see uh, jumping around correctly and when he gets to the top, he won't cling to empty air. And I'm gonna disable Coily just while I'm testing this so he doesn't come up and kill me. And there's Ugg. Jumped off the edge. There's another UG. He jumped off the edge. There's another UG. Aha! All right, so I know exactly what's wrong, but I want to show you a neat little trick for how to debug something like this. So let's go back into our board manager. And where we're doing that raycast, let's add a debug draw ray. And so we're going to draw it from pause vector three to forward times two and we'll make it yellow and let's go back out in the unity and this is going to show us we're actually casting in the right place i'm i'm 99 sure that we're casting in the right place So let's pause and let's look at our scene view. Hmm. Oh, you know what? I needed to give it a duration. Go back into that board manager and where we're doing that draw ray, let's, let me look at these parameters here. We want start direction, color, then duration. So we'll say 5F and go back into Unity. Hit play. Wait for Ugg to try to jump and then we'll pause it. There he is. Pause. And you can see the ray is being cast into that block. You can even see it penetrating into the block. So why are we not getting a collision with the ray cast? Well, it's very simple. If we go into our prefabs and we look at the pyramid, we look at the square, under the square there is a cube. There's no collider on the cube. We add a box collider and that should work fine. So let's just test that out. And we'll wait for Ugg to jump. There he is. He's going to jump. And it's working. Okay. 
So that dealt with that issue. So now we want to fix the issue where the monsters should be destroyed when Coily dies. Oh, but before we do that, I want to go ahead and get rid of that debug ray that we added to the board manager. We don't need that anymore. And I'm going to get rid of this comment and out code as well. Okay, so the issue with the enemies not being destroyed when Coily jumps off the edge. We're going to go into the enemy manager. Well, I think this is our problem. It's telling me that enemies is never updated. So we instantiate it here. And in destroy all enemies, we're going through our collection of enemies, but there's never anything in it. So let's go down here to spawn enemy where we're actually spawning them. And I think right here, we want to add that enemy. And I want to go back up to where we destroy all the enemies. I think I don't want to directly destroy them here. I want to add a function called destroy enemy. And I'm going to pass in a float for how long I want it to delay before destroying it. And we'll come down here below destroy coily. And I'll add destroy enemy game object enemy with a delay that defaults to two and in there if the enemy is already not active or it's destroyed I'm just going to return otherwise I'm going to try and get the component and if that's not null we're going to unsubscribe from the on enemy died event. And then we're going to destroy it, passing in the delay that was provided. All right. We go up to our on enemy died. And here. We definitely want to still remove it from our collection of enemies. But here is where we're going to call destroy enemy with a two second delay. I think that should take care of all the enemies being destroyed. So when Coily dies, we call destroy all enemies. And destroy all enemies will destroy Coily and then go through our collection of enemies and destroy each of them. And then we're going to clear our collection of enemies. When, when a regular enemy just dies, we're going to remove it from the list and destroy it with a delay because it's got an animation. Um, usually when it dies, I, I don't want it to go away immediately. Anyway, let's uh, jump back into Unity and give this a test. We'll see if we can jump on a transport disc and get Coley to jump off and see if all the enemies die. That looked like it worked. It's kind of hard to tell if that worked because it looked like they might have died already. Ah. <laughs> 
He had me pinned in. Ah. I'm not very good at this. Okay, so there's currently two, three enemies on the board. Two, three enemies on the board. And they all die when Coily dies. Okay, so it looks like that works. And then Coily killed me immediately. I need to set a longer delay for Coily to come in after he is killed. So let's take a look at the other issues. Hubert getting knocked off his place when colliding with monsters. So I noticed that Cubert, when he hits a monster, their colliders are interacting, their rigid bodies are interacting. And then because of the logic that I added, you may remember um, when Cubert respawns, we're saving his last position and we're using that as his spawn position. So let me look for where we kill Cubert. Yeah, so here we kill Cubert. We call this Cubert died method on the game manager. Um, let's see, is that where it's doing? Oh, handle Cubert death. So in handle Cubert death, which we're calling as a coroutine, we're resetting Cubert's spawn position to be his, um, let's go in here and look. Depending on where he was, we're gonna use his last position or not. So essentially, if he died on the board, we're gonna use his last position and we're setting his spawn position to be that his last position, his current position. Well, if he's already been knocked off his if he's killed in mid-jump, for instance, this is going to be wrong. Um, and so we're going to want to do something a little bit different here. Uh, if he's not on the board, we just use the start position. So let's go into Cubert. And we have a variable for his start position. And we're initializing that uh, in a reset Cubert function that we're calling from the game manager. I'm going to collapse a lot of these functions so scrolling won't take so long, especially these long functions. Yeah, here's the reset Qbert function. So in here, we're setting his start position and his transform position to be what was passed into this function from the game manager. Um, so I think we want to do something a little bit different than that. So I think I want to initialize start position to vector 3.0. Let me get rid of that breakpoint. And in here, we'll say if start position is not equal to vector three or is equal to vector 3.0 so we haven't set it yet then we're going to say start position equals cubert spawn position and then down here yeah i think that should be fine So this way we'll never clobber our start position. It'll always be the initial start position that we were created with, um, but we can still spawn at a specified position that the game manager will use. Now we need to expose our landing position to the game manager so that it can pass that in when it wants to spawn us where we would have ended up when we were killed. So up here, we're just gonna say landing position 
equals vector three dot zero. Or actually, we don't need to initialize that. All right, so we have our landing position variable. And we're going to want a property to expose that. So down here, I'll say public vector three landing position. And we're just going to return that landing position. And I think we'll start inside this receive player input. Instead of having this be an out parameter, we're just going to use the, let me do a I'm going to do a search and replace. If I can type it. All right. So now we're using the, the member variable for our landing position from within this received player input. Now that's going to break where we're calling it from, which is an update. So now we won't be passing this in. And so we want to do the same thing in here. Okay. So we're passing that into all those functions. Those all look good. Let's go down and look at jumped to disk. So I think instead of passing in a variable, I mean, we can still pass in a variable. I think I want to change it. Oh, I don't want to do that. It's a wrong function. Let's go ahead and remove that. All right. So we can get rid of all these. So let's go back to the game manager. And where we handle cure death. Let's see, reset spawn position. Instead of using his current position. We're going to use his landing position. And I think we can go ahead and keep the rotation as it is. So let's go ahead and play around with this a little bit. We got to let an enemy hit us and kill us. There, so he died up in the air, but it respawned him where he was going to land. So I think there's a timing issue there where he thought he was going to jump off the edge, but he was killed by a monster. But I think we have it dealt with that bug at least. Let's look at the next item on the list. 
Qbert not always jumping to the start location from the transport. So this is going to be a case where if he was killed, it's going to jump to his landing location instead of the proper location, uh, the start location, which I think we fixed at the same time we fixed this with that code that we added to not clobber our start location. So let's just test that and make sure it works. Okay, so now we're going to jump onto the transport disk. Oh, it did not work. I mean, one thing I want to do, I know that I made a mistake with Qbert jumping to disk. I think that I do want perform jump to take the parameter because I, I want to use this disk's position as our destination for our jump, which means I'm going to have to revert a lot of those changes that I made. So let's go to all the errors. There should only be a couple. And I just realized where we're jumping to the platform, we don't want to use the landing position. We want to use start position. So let's go test that again and it should work. Set out, it looks good. He jumps to the platform correctly. And he jumps off the platform correctly. Nice. Uh, what else is left on that bug list? The monsters collide with one another. So what we're going to want to do to fix that is put Coily on his own layer. So if we look at Coily in our prefab enemy... You see, Coily is on the default layer, and if we look at the physics, edit, project settings, physics, the default layer collides with a whole bunch of stuff. It doesn't look like it should collide with the sidewalkers, but I did notice that Coily would get knocked around, and I want to put him on his own layer regardless. So. Come in here and say add layer, coily, and then we'll go back to coily, and we will put him on the coily layer with all his child elements. So coily, coily, coily. So I think we're we're good there. And then go into our physics settings. Oh, don't want preferences. I want it. Project settings. I'm going to dock this up here so I can just go to it whenever. Scroll down. Coily should only collide with the player and the platform. Okay. So I think it's time to start looking at new functionality. So we can add wrong way, which is just like UG, but on the other side of the cube, and bad ball. And then we'll see how far we get. We might add some of these uh, multiple flips on the platforms. Uh, probably instead of that, I'll probably do the easy one, which is just to limit the number of monsters based on what level you're on. So let's go about adding wrong way. We'll go into our enemies prefabs. We're going to select UG and hit Control D to duplicate UG. I'm going to rename him to be 
oops, rename, <laughs> wrong way. Gonna double click to open up his prefab. Actually, I'm gonna drag him into the scene. And I'm gonna turn on our pyramid. So we want him to cling to this wall. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is rotate him negative 90 degrees on the Y axis. And that looks pretty darn good, actually. Let's go ahead and, it's very interesting. Oh, I haven't, I don't know why it didn't show me that I had changed the prefab and give me an option to override it. But that looks good. Now we want to change his material so he doesn't look exactly the same as UGG. Um, so we can come down here. I'm going to rename this. I thought I already did that, but rename wrong way. Apply that. And in here, under his mesh renderer, we have this material. I think I like this one. It's kind of a brown looking guy. Let's give that a test and see if it works just right out of the box. Oh, we got to go into the enemy manager. So we're going to our resources, managers, game manager, and down here in the enemy manager, we've only got the one enemy prefab. So let's add wrong way. So now we have two types of enemies that can be spawned. Hit play and see what happens. So there's the one that I had already just stuck in there. So let me um, remove him from the scene. Make sure there's nothing to override. Oh, I changed the material. Got to override that. Delete that. And let's give it a test. There's UG. There's Wrong Way. Something funky going on with Quayley jumping too fast. Yeah, definitely something funky going in there. We'll probably look into that in the next video. Uh, but I think I want to add the one more enemy, uh, which should be extremely simple, and that is bad ball okay so to add bad ball i'm gonna actually duplicate coily and i will rename this bad ball and open up that prefab we're going to remove the base we don't need that and we're going to rename the egg to be bad ball okay we're going to want to create a new material so up here under materials, I will right click, create material. And I think I want it to be specular. We're gonna make it red. And let's increase the smoothness a little bit. Ah, all the way up, I think that looks good. And let's give it some emission. Make it red. I think that that looks pretty cool. So come back in here to bad ball. And actually I can just drag, oh, let me rename this. I'm gonna rename this to bad ball color. And I'll just drag that right onto him. Okay, now we're gonna to want to change his script. He's currently got the coily script and we don't want that. So let's just remove that component and under scripts, enemies, right click, create, C sharp script. We'll call this bad ball. And I will open that up. 
and we're going to derive from enemy base. So let's get rid of this boilerplate. I think all we're going to want is Unity Engine, and we're going to we're going to want to add a vector for out of bounds because we're going to what we're going to do is uh, we're going to override the get random jump location. We're not going to call the base class. Essentially, we're always going to move down. But we're going to want to do something special if there are no legal jumps left. So if we get to the bottom row, we can't jump any farther. So we're going to say int locations equals game manager dot instance dot board manager legal jump locations. We're going to pass in our legal jump locations, which is in our base class. It's basically everything on the board. And we're going to give it our current position. And this will return zero um, locations if there aren't any legal ones left. If we reach the bottom of the board, we can't jump any farther down. Uh, because by default, down only is true. So we're only going to be looking at down jumps, either down to the left or down to the right. All right, so now what do we want to do if jump locations is zero? We need to have something we can return. So I'm going to create a read only vector three. I'm going to call it out of bounds. And it's going to be a new vector three. And I'm just going to give it a negative five, negative five, negative five. That should definitely be out of bounds. And so here I will return, if locations is greater than zero, then I'm going to return the random, one of, one of the random locations. Otherwise, out of bounds. All right, so if locations is greater than zero, return a random from that legal jump locations array. Otherwise, return out of bounds. And I think that's all the special code that we need. Interesting. Okay. Let's see, what else do we need to do? We need to go into our enemy manager which is under Game Manager. And we want to add that prefab Oh, and we need to set we need to set his uh, spawn location. So let me go into Qbert. We want him to use the same spawn location as Qbert. He's always going to spawn at the top right here. So let me just say copy we're going to go back into bad ball and we're just going to paste that there. So he'll always spawn on the top of the pyramid. All right, let's give that a test. So I can't sit up there and wait because bad ball might spawn. Ooh, I did not. Oh, there's this material. That is interesting. Oops. He does not seem to be jumping. And he didn't go away. Did I not add the script to him? All right, let's go look at our bad ball prefab. I did not add the script. So let's go into our scripts enemies, drag the bad ball script on there drag his animator down to there. Now we should be good. Where are you, bad ball? There he is. 
And he's jumping. Oops. I want to see him jump all the way to the bottom of the board. So I think the best way to test that would be to temporarily go into our enemy manager and just remove UG and wrong way. Um, and I'm wondering if we should even have Coily. I can just disable Coily after he spawns. So expand, find Coily, disable him, unpause, and there's Bad Ball, and he's jumping randomly down. Oh, there's a couple of them. Now there's three of them. Yep, they jumped off the edge. All right. Okay, so I'll go ahead and turn those back on in the enemy manager. So go to our prefabs. We've got bad ball. We've got UG. We've got wrong way. So yeah, we've got all of our enemies. I'm going to call that a wrap for this video. If you found it useful, do me a favor and click that like and subscribe button and click that notification bell if you want to be alerted when I post my next video. And as always, if you have any questions about anything I covered or if you have any suggestions or requests, leave a comment below and I always read and respond to all comments. Thanks so much for watching and good luck on your game development journey.